This is the Bobby Ho Show. And in this next season of episodes, I'm featuring interviews from my new project called We Are Boss People. We Are Boss People is all about the new success, authentic and unapologetic. I'm doing profiles of people with stories of transitions, unique journeys, setbacks, and triumphs. For more, please visit wearebosspeople.com, where you can watch the video and read the interviews from the profiles. My first guest is Nicole Maddox, an entrepreneur and mom of four, who shares her journey leaving her dream career as a lawyer to starting two small businesses. Nicole shares her tips on how she balances it all and what she is passing on to her family about persevering through a crisis. Hi, she wears many hats and she has many hustles. She's a woman of hope. She is Nicole Maddox. How are you doing, Nicole? Good, hi Rob, how are you? All is well in Brooklyn. How's it going in Connecticut? It is going all right. We've got another rainy April day, but other than that, no complaints over here. Good to hear, good to hear. And the Maddox and are well? They are doing well. We've got uh, four little ones, or some of them not so little, um, all over the house right now doing school assignments and all sorts of other creative projects they've come up with themselves. So um, keep them busy. <laughs> That's the name of the game. So Nicole, excited to be talking to you because apart from us being friends for, can you believe, I think it's almost 20 years now. And in that wow. time, in addition to adding to your family, you've gone from a career in corporate law to starting two businesses and you've had quite a journey. And so I would love just to hear more about your transition from the corporate world to being an entrepreneur, having a photography business, being a franchisee, and what led you down that path. Um, so if you wouldn't mind sharing us with, you know, kind of how you uh, pretty much transitioned from being a lawyer. I think you told me before that you had, um, being a lawyer was your, was your career goal when you were younger. Is that correct? Yeah, so I've always wanted to be a lawyer, at least since probably about the sixth grade or so. Um, so many different things inspired me. And so that's the path that I pursued. Went from college to law school and then went to work for a large New York City firm. Eventually, I ended up going in-house working for a pharmaceutical company and did that for about a decade. And then you went from in-house in New York City to a firm in Connecticut, correct? It was a, a pharmaceutical company, so I was in-house counsel. And the cool thing oh. about that is from that position, I was able to not only apply my, my legal knowledge, but also to develop lots of um, uh, business skills throughout it, right? Because there are so many things when you're just on the legal side that you aren't necessarily thinking about when it comes to business and how to run a business and everything else. And so I've always had that entrepreneurial mind, and this sort of helped it to grow in a more professional way. And what was your first business that you started? Oh, my very first business. Very I was first. Uh, very first. I was probably about, I think it was 12, 13 years old. And I loved the Babysitter's Club uh, books. And so some of my friends and I decided to, to follow that model and, and, and start a babysitting business. So we got a phone number, we advertised in a local newspaper, and eventually we had a business so that when people needed a babysitter, they could call that main line and one of us would be available for them. So that was my, my very first business and then did that for a few years and it was great. And then while you were still in corporate law, you started your photography business, which is called what? Simply Pause Photography. So... Um, I've always had this creative side of me and not necessarily had the proper outlets for it. And so when I picked up photography the way that I did, I had always been interested. I've had so many different cameras, but eventually I started to turn it into more of a, of a side business that I was able to do, obviously, without interrupting my day job. And it just started taking off naturally. And I was curious, like, did you take photography classes at some point, like when you were in high school or how did you, you're, I, I think, I guess you're pretty much self-taught. Is that correct? Yes. Um, you know, some of it I learned myself and I, uh, but I've also had two awesome mentors. And so one in New York, one in Connecticut. And I feel like both of them have sort of helped me along my journey by offering me constructive criticism, which you have to be willing to accept, and I have, and it's helped me to grow. In addition to that, there's obviously a bunch of online resources, um, and in particular, I've uh, taken to joining some, um, some Facebook groups for photographers where I've learned a ton there, too. I'm curious, how did you find your mentors? Because I know that's, that's really key for anyone looking to sort of take a leap into something new is having someone guide them on the steps they need to take. So how did you come across your mentors? 
my very first was a friend. And so he sort of guided me as I started becoming um, more and more interested. In addition to sort of giving me tips on the photography itself, he um, gave me tips on equipment to buy and stuff like that. And then eventually he started having me second shoot weddings with him. And so that was great. And then when we moved to Connecticut, um, this was somebody that I met through a, a mutual friend. And the nice thing I think about most in the photography community is that they're willing to take another under their wing and to help them along their journey, recognizing that in photography, competition is not the same as I think it might be in other industries, right? Every photographer has a style, um, both in their personality as well as their actual photographs. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people to find the right photographer for them, which means that the fact that there are many is not necessarily a bad thing. Hopefully it leads to, to good matches in the client photographer relationship. Simply pause. So what does simply pause mean? And I'm curious, how did you find your style as a photographer? Uh, so Simply Pause was one that was debated um, for, uh, for a long time. You know, most people use their name. So in theory, I guess I should have been Nicole Maddox Photography. In the beginning, I thought, well, what if it grows? What if I take more people in? What if we, it becomes more of a business? I didn't want to necessarily associate it with my name. But the term itself for me was just thinking about capturing a moment in time, pausing for a moment, and just appreciating that that moment in time, and then being able to enjoy that very same moment for years to come. And so, simply pause. Love it, love it. And then how would you characterize your style then that um, you know captures that moment in time? What's your style as a photographer? So I've always been um, drawn to photojournalistic styles, right? So that's the photographer that I got for my wedding. I made sure to find somebody who wasn't so interested in the overly posed photos. Although those are nice, they're not necessarily the ones that we really appreciate later in life. And so for me, the style that I'm going for is whatever's natural with the family. So I give them some time to warm up. Maybe I'm talking to them a little bit. I'm watching the dynamics between families. And then I'm just capturing those genuine expressions on faces, um, those moments where they're together and some of my favorites don't even involve people looking at the camera right no I know when I went uh, on your page recently again I was just um, blown away by your ability really to just capture the um, differences between families each uh, family portrait looks like them and then even with the different ways that the different family members are represented there it's all unique um, what is you think your your secret sauce to being able to get people to relax and just be themselves and then capture them on film I think most people don't like the idea of a camera focused on them, right? So from the beginning, I, I explain that, listen, I'm not really looking at you. I'm looking at the light around you. I'm looking at the background. And for a moment, I'm going to look at you, but don't feel like I'm staring at you the entire time. And then I just think that if you can start to engage in conversation, you're really just going to relax the moment. You know, it's a little different than maybe going into a portrait studio and everybody up against a stiff background, having to look at the camera. I think having that, that fluid, um, movement throughout the photo shoot is something that causes people to naturally react and then uh, or relax rather um, and then of course once you get people going I think the key is not expecting something of an individual in the portrait that is uh, that is completely unlike their personality so there are plenty of people who just don't smile um, I look at them and go oh my gosh they're they're upset and then I realize after a while that's just who they are and so you capture them how they are and where they are. And in particular, you, you capture the dynamics between families and it ends up being just a beautiful portrait. And I know, I mean, with everyone having probably at least more than two cameras in their household, I think a lot of people are able to capture their family photos without going to professional photographer. But you've shared some really cool stories about things that you've seen, um, people that have, that have told you what the, the photos have meant to them. What do you think is the benefit of someone going to a photographer? like you to getting um, a professional family photo done? So you can, I mean, cell phones now are absolutely amazing. Um, what they're not going to do for you is, is teach you some of those skills that photographers know and use throughout their, their sessions. And so you're maybe not gonna understand the, 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 how different of an appropriately lit photo is than maybe what you're taking with a cell phone. So I've even taught people taking selfies, right? There's a big difference though when the light's behind you versus when it's in front of you, the angles and everything else. And so I think that for professional photographers are able to do that in a way that you can't. Selfies are cool, but if you want photos with all of you in it, 
you're not going to get the same kind of a portrait. And then the other thing I'd have to say is that if your intention is to print out photos, what you're going to get off of the cell phone isn't going to be quite the same. I have a client, um, I went back and visited her after the session that I did with her and her family, and she had turned the entire first floor of her home, it was, I guess it was technically the, the basement, um, but she had done huge canvases of the entire portrait session. And because I offer variety, right, not everything is a straight on portrait, maybe it's just someone's hand or hands being held or feet or whatever it might be. She had this beautiful display, but she had them in large canvases and you're never gonna be able to print out and have it look right from a cell phone, those, those sorts of things. So you can right. do much more with the professional photography. Love it, love it. And then I'm just curious, uh, since a lot of us are home these days with our families, any tips on trying to capture fun family moments, just even with whatever we have, cameras we have available? Um, I would say just go with what's natural, just like, just like what I would do in a session. I think, again, everyone's so, so concentrated on everybody look here, everybody smile. I think you get some of the, the most amazing pictures when people are just doing what they're doing naturally. And I know a lot of photographers now, since they can't um, photograph you know, clients in the midst of this quarantine are starting to do um, their own, they're turning to their own families. Um, I heard one person say that they've got their alarm set for the same time every day. And when that alarm goes off, they take their camera and they go photograph whatever's going on. And so that's another cool idea of how to, to capture this moment in life. Um, and then just, you know, again, think about lighting and such it'll obviously make the pictures even cooler if you've got some sunlight streaming through but I think there's no wrong answer to capturing your family. And um, just going back to your story, so you were still working at a firm in, um, or for a corporate client in Connecticut. You started your photography business, and then you decided to leave your legal career uh, to focus on your business full time. I did. I um, well, not just my business. So I, I left just because there were just a lot of things going on in, in life at the time. And I just started looking at life differently about how I wanted to spend my time and, and how much of my creativity I was really able to still continue doing in light of changes that were happening at my job. And so I left both to, to be able to grow that business, but also just to be able to, to focus on the family for a while and just to reevaluate, right? To do a a, a reset, if you will. Um, I think that we pick careers and we think, oh, I'm, that's the way I'm going from the time that I graduate until the time that I retire. And I just hit a point in life where I realized it didn't have to be that way. People ask me all the time, so you stopped being a lawyer. I say, of course, you never stop being a lawyer, it's just in everything you do, much to my, you know, kids' horror. Um, but um, it's not necessarily something I've given up. I still, you know, think about things from a legal perspective and everything else. I, did, I decided at that point to stop. Um, and so I did. I started growing the photography business. But then just a few months later, another opportunity came about that I couldn't resist. And so that's where I am now, running two businesses. And what's the new opportunity you have? So the, the new business, although it's been open, we've had our doors open for over two years now, is a co-working space. It's called Office Evolution Stamford. Office Evolution is a, is a larger corporation that's franchised. And so I have a business partner who I used to work with back at the firm in New York. And she and I had opened up Connecticut's first um, um, Office Evolution. And so now there's two of them in Connecticut. They're all over the United States. And for those who aren't familiar with co-working, it's essentially a corporate space with offices, um, uh, conference rooms, uh, kitchen areas, um, anything you could possibly need to run a business. But maybe if you're a smaller business, the expense of that is just too big for you to be able to do. This allows people to, to take individual offices in our larger space and be able to grow their business as, as they see fit. And in you know, the time that they, that they want to grow without having to incur that huge expense from the beginning. Right, and Office Evolution is still open now, correct? We are still open um, under the current um, governor's order. We're still considered essential for a variety of reasons. And so while we are certainly practicing social distancing and the number of people who are actually there is reduced significantly, we are still open. And what I like to think is that we are allowing businesses to have business continuity at a time when so many are being disrupted in such a way that they're not sure how they're gonna bounce back when this is over. So I'd like to think that we're doing our part to keep the economy going, to keep some of these businesses alive at a time when they may otherwise be fearful of what's gonna happen next. 
That's an excellent message. And then how are you helping small businesses through Office Evolution? I know you said there's a benefit in having an address and I've seen some other things that your uh, that Office Evolution has offered. I think you've done seminars on, on marketing and other things. What are the things that Office Evolution provides to small businesses? So more than anything, we allow the ability to grow. So as I mentioned, you're not taking on a huge expense. Um, we're very flexible. So you can say, listen, I only need an office for two months just so I can see how this goes. You know, where else are you gonna be able to go and get a professional space for a short period of time? Most commercial um, uh, or, uh, landlords want you to sign five, 10 year leases. And so that's one of the upsides that we're extremely flexible. Then you can start at a really low level. As you mentioned, you can just get a mailbox. It allows you to say, yes, I have an office in Stanford without the huge expense of an office. It's a place where you can now have an address on your business card as opposed to having nothing there. It just changes your professional appearance. It also allows you to um, rent out office space or, or conference room time as needed. So if you decide, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna meet with a group of potential investors, but in order to be professional, in order to sell what I'm trying to do in my business, I've gotta make sure that I've got a professional appearance and that allows you to do it. Many people don't wanna meet clients in their homes. We have a space where they can do that. And then the other thing that we're really trying to do is to build a community. One of the things that I've always missed most about my, my previous jobs are just the people. And so we're creating this community where people maybe work for different companies, but they're all still kind of creating a community together and supporting one another. And then we're doing seminars to help one another and help others in the community. So it's just a great concept. And um, I'm just really proud to be part of it right now. And for someone who is thinking of either starting their own business, whether it's a creative business, whether it's a franchisee, um, from all the things that you've gone through, what advice would you offer to someone who's looking to become an entrepreneur and maybe leave their, their current career or just because they have to, how do they start from scratch to, to become an entrepreneur? Any advice that you'd offer? Sure. Um, so I think that most people, when they get an idea, they just get so excited that they just immediately want to jump into it. The advice that I would give would just be to slow down for a second because it's, it's tempting to just rush right into something. So for me, um, you know, my husband and I talked about the, the possibility of this and what it would mean for us, our family, or for our children. Um, the commitment, obviously, is something that you have to think about. If that's a long-term um, venture that you're about to get into, what does that mean for the, you know, in the long run? And then just think about a financial plan, right? Both on how you're going to keep your home going, but also on how you're going to keep your business going. Because one thing I've certainly learned is that all of this involves some serious ups and downs, and you have to be ready to stomach all of that. Um, the, in, in particular, it's important to have a, a business plan if you're going to go looking for uh, funding from anyone. Nobody wants you to come and say, hey, give me money, and you've got no idea really on how you're going to make this work. What are you going to do for marketing? Who's going to be your, you know, how are you going to employ people? What are you going to do from the time that, that that ramp up time? That's the time that it takes, you know, to get really up and going. And sometimes you just don't know how long that's going to be. And so I think all of these things are important. And then lastly, just like I mentioned with the photography, finding good mentors and just really understanding what you don't know and being willing to admit what you don't know and really listening. I think many times we think, oh, I've got this great idea. No, no, no. I know what I'm talking about. And many times people fail to listen to wise advice that's given to them. Um, I think that sometimes wise advice might seem like negativity, but you have to kind of, you know, parcel between the two. Somebody might be giving you the, the other side, playing devil's advocate, because they're trying to help you think through all the potential issues. And that's a good thing. So I say, listen to all of it, and then really develop a plan. Love it. And um, you mentioned kind of the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur, and then you obviously have other hats as, as, a, as a wife, as a mom, you know, taking care of yourself. Uh, real talk, do you ever just have moments where you just are sort of, how am I going to, you know, how do I balance it all? All the time, Rob. All the time. Um, on a positive note, I live on this great street that's flat. And so I've done more walking up and down the street. I'm not sure how my neighbors feel about this, but just walking. That's what I do when I need to just clear my mind, walking, I'm walking, I'm praying, I'm doing whatever it takes to really reset my mind and just stay calm. Because I think staying calm throughout it all is the key to all of it. I'm just curious, how do you start your mornings? Do you have a certain routine that sort of keeps you grounded and balanced? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm allergic to the morning. I get out of bed as late as possible, which is probably the opposite of what you're going to hear from any, you know, go-getter who say, you know, get up early. But I'm up late, if that counts at all. Um, 
I'm just one who really needs rest. And so I do take time in the morning to really think through the day. And then once I, my feet hit the ground, I'm going from start to finish. Um, I think in a, in a relatively organized way, I've got lots of notes and lists and everything else. And I, I think that we all have um, um, weaknesses. I think it's important to recognize what your weakness is and then develop a plan to overcome the weakness. And so the more you put on your plate, for me, it's, you know, four children, my husband, you know, household responsibilities, two businesses, right? That's a lot. And so I've started realizing I can't remember everything. I try my best, I write lists, and sometimes I lose those lists. So I've taken advantage of technology and I will just set alarms all throughout the day to remind me what it is that I needed to know by that time of the day. And it's really helped. So I think figuring out what your weaknesses are, rather than deny that you have them, find a way to overcome them. And I think we've spoken about this before, about being a parent and, and moments of weaknesses when you're, you just don't feel like you have it together and you know your kids might notice or you know they ask, how's it going, mom? And then what do you share? Because we all want to be the strong parent who doesn't want to pass on you know, what we're going through to our kids. They you know, want them to be kids. So just curious, especially now with everything that's going on and, and impacting your business, what are the kinds of conversation that you're having with your family? Yeah, I, I think that I probably before all of this, um, by this, I just mean the pandemic that we're going through. Um, I tried my best just to not involve the children in anything that was worrying me. And then as I think through all of this, I think, wow, I don't know that that's the best strategy. I think that what we're learning, we're learning a lot about ourselves through everything that everyone's going through right now, which is how do I handle a crisis? And I think right now we have this opportunity to teach our children how to handle a crisis. Um, how to survive a crisis, right? How to stay calm in a crisis. And so when I, when I, it's not just the pandemic, it's the, the decreased business and revenue that I'm experiencing this right now. It's obviously not something I want the children to worry about, but I want them to understand that hard times are gonna come and we can still breathe through them. And so I've discussed those things with them so that they can watch an example of somebody go through something and still come out okay. So that when they have their own challenges, they can think, I'm going to be okay, and I'm going to get through this, and it might take time, but I know that I can do it. Love that message. Uh, just to wrap things up, I need you to settle a family dispute for us. Nicole, when playing Uno, can you stack a draw four on a draw four? Please resolve this for our family. Um, I would say yes. Uh, my understanding in Uno is that if it's a similar card, you can stack them. Now, I don't know what that means for the person picking up all those draw fours, but my understanding and my vote is going to be for yes. I will let them know. Auntie Nicole said, yes, you can stack. That's it. Final decision. Last question. I hope I sided with the girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, say it's five o'clock and your kids are listening to music and you ask them what they're listening to and they say, mom, it's none of your music. Mom, your music is corny. What do you put on, Nicole, to show them something about good music? What are you playing? Oh, oh man, Rob, there's a lot of them. There is a lot of them. But, and I, I lesser known fact, I, I, there are many things I've forgotten over time, but lyrics are not one of them, especially if it took place in the late 80s, early 90s. And so I'm going with Rob Bass, It Takes Two, and we're going through start to finish all of those lyrics. There's got to be movement with it too. This is usually the point at which my kids start to look at me like I'm crazy, but it is okay. <laughs> I love it. So we need to, uh, you're teaching your kids how to be patient, how to persevere through trials, and all the lyrics to It Takes Two. And there it is. Right. There it is. <laughs> Thank you for your time this afternoon, Nicole. All right. Thanks, Rob. All right. Be well. Bye. -bye.